Scintillators can be categorized based on their modes of operation, functionality, and intended use. Here are some common types of ventilators. Positive pressure ventilators. These ventilators deliver air to the lungs by creating positive pressure during the inspiratory phase. Positive pressure helps inflate the lungs and facilitate breathing. Most modern ventilators fall into this category. Volume controlled ventilators. In volume controlled ventilation, the ventilator delivers a preset tidal volume of air to the patient's lungs with each breath. The pressure generated during inspiration varies based on the patient's lung compliance. Pressure controlled ventilators. Pressure controlled ventilators maintain a constant pressure during the inspiratory phase. The delivered tidal volume depends on the lung compliance and airway resistance. These ventilators are often used in specific clinical situations. Dual mode ventilators. Dual mode ventilators offer both volume controlled and pressure controlled modes, allowing healthcare professionals to choose the most suitable mode based on the patient's condition and requirements. Bi-level positive airway pressure, BiPAP ventilators. BiPAP ventilators provide two levels of positive airway pressure, one during inhalation and a lower pressure during exhalation. They are commonly used in non-invasive ventilation for conditions like sleep apnea or chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, COPD. Pressure support ventilators. Pressure support ventilators assist spontaneous breathing by delivering positive pressure during inspiration. They are often used to support patients who can breathe spontaneously but require assistance. High frequency oscillatory ventilators, HFOV. HFOV ventilators deliver very rapid and small volume breaths at a high frequency. They are used in neonatal and pediatric patients or in cases of severe respiratory distress. Transport ventilators, designed for portability, transport ventilators are compact and lightweight, making them suitable for use during patient transportation, such as in ambulances or aircraft. Neonatal ventilators. These ventilators are specifically designed for the unique needs of premature infants and newborns. They provide gentle and precise ventilation tailored to the delicate respiratory systems of neonates. Volume Assured Pressure Support VAPs, Ventilators VPS. Ventilators combine features of both volume controlled and pressure controlled ventilation. They adjust the pressure to deliver a consistent tidal volume adapting to changes in the patient's lung compliance. Adaptive Support Ventilation, ASV. ASV is an intelligent ventilation mode that automatically adjusts the respiratory rate and tidal volume based on the patient's needs and lung mechanics. The selection of a ventilator type depends on factors such as the patient's condition, the mode of ventilation required, and the specific clinical goals. Healthcare professionals carefully choose the appropriate ventilator based on individual patient needs and the nature of respiratory support required. Respiratory support. Ventilators provide crucial respiratory support to patients who are unable to breathe adequately on their own. This support is essential in conditions such as respiratory failure, acute respiratory distress syndrome, RDs, or during certain medical procedures. Oxygenation and ventilation control. Ventilators allow precise control of oxygenation and ventilation parameters, including tidal volume, respiratory rate, and positive end expiratory pressure, P. This level of control is vital for optimizing gas exchange in patients with compromised lung function. Life-saving intervention. In critical care settings, ventilators can be a life-saving intervention preventing respiratory failure and maintaining oxygen supply to vital organs. Surgical anesthesia. Ventilators are used during surgeries to deliver controlled anesthesia, ensuring that the patient remains in a stable and controlled respiratory state while under general anesthesia. Flexible modes of ventilation. Different modes of ventilation, such as volume controlled or pressure controlled, offer flexibility to healthcare professionals, allowing them to tailor respiratory support 
to the specific needs of individual patients. Ventilator-associated lung injury. Prolonged use of ventilators may contribute to ventilator-associated lung injury, valley, which includes conditions such as barotrauma, damage due to pressure changes, or volutrauma, injury caused by excessive tidal volumes. Infection risk. Ventilator-associated pneumonia, VAP, is a risk associated with the use of ventilators. The invasive nature of the equipment can introduce pathogens into the respiratory system, increasing the risk of infection. Barotrauma and oxygen toxicity. High pressure settings on ventilators may lead to barotrauma, causing damage to lung tissues. Additionally, prolonged exposure to high levels of oxygen can result in oxygen toxicity, potentially harming lung tissues. Patient discomfort. Patients on ventilators may experience discomfort due to the invasive nature of the procedure leading to challenges in communication and potential psychological distress. Dependency and muscle atrophy. Prolonged use of ventilators can lead to respiratory muscle atrophy, where the muscles responsible for breathing weaken due to lack of use. Weaning off ventilator support can be challenging. Risk of complications. Complications related to the use of ventilators may include issues such as ventilator-induced diaphragmatic dysfunction, where the diaphragm weakens over time. Difficulty weaning. Some patients may face challenges in successfully transitioning from ventilator support to spontaneous breathing, leading to a prolonged dependency on mechanical ventilation. It's important to note that while ventilators are life-saving in critical situations, their use involves careful consideration of potential risks and challenges. Healthcare professionals monitor patients closely, adjusting ventilator settings to balance the benefits of respiratory support with the aim of minimizing associated risks. Setting up a ventilator involves configuring various parameters to deliver mechanical ventilation tailored to a patient's specific needs. Ventilators are crucial in supporting individuals with respiratory insufficiency or failure. Proper settings ensure effective and safe ventilation. Below are key settings commonly adjusted on a ventilator. First, mode of ventilation. Select the appropriate ventilation mode based on the patient's condition. Common modes include assist control, AC, provides a set number of breaths per minute with the option for patient-triggered breaths, pressure support, PS, augments patient-initiated breaths with a set level of pressure support, second, tidal volume, VT, set the volume of air delivered in each breath, usually in milliliters. Tidal volume is adjusted based on the patient's size and condition. Third, respiratory rate, RRR. Determine the number of breaths delivered per minute. The respiratory rate is adjusted based on the patient's respiratory needs and the selected ventilation mode. 4. Fraction of inspired oxygen, FiO2. Specify the percentage of oxygen delivered in each breath. FiO2 is adjusted to maintain adequate oxygen levels in the blood. It is usually set between 21%, room, air, and 100%. 5. Positive end expiratory pressure, PEEP. Set the level of PEEP to maintain positive pressure in the lungs at the end of expiration. PEEP helps prevent alveolar collapse and improves oxygenation. 6. Pressure control, PC, or pressure support, PS. Level. In pressure controlled modes, set the desired pressure delivered during inspiration. In pressure support, Determine the level of pressure assistance provided during patient-triggered breaths, 7, i.e. ratio, inspiratory to expiratory ratio. Adjust the ratio of time spent inhaling to the time spent exhaling. Common ratios are 1, 2, or 1, 1, with variations depending on the patient's condition. 8, flow rate. Specify the rate at which gas is delivered during inspiration. Flow rates are adjusted to achieve the desired tidal volume and enhance patient comfort. 9. Sensitivity. Set the level of sensitivity to trigger patient-initiated breaths. This parameter is crucial in modes that allow spontaneous breathing efforts. 10. Alarm settings. 
configure high and low pressure alarms, low tidal volume alarms and other alarms to ensure prompt notification of any issues. Alarm parameters should be individualized based on the patient's condition. 11. Ventilator graphics and waveforms. Monitor ventilator graphics including pressure, flow and volume waveforms to assess the patient-ventilator interaction and detect any abnormalities. 1. Inspiration termination. Criteria. Define how the ventilator determines the end of inspiration. Common criteria include reaching a certain flow rate or a percentage of the peak inspiratory pressure. 2. Temperature and humidity. Settings. Set temperature and humidity levels for the inspired gases to maintain the airway's integrity and enhance patient comfort. 3. Patient circuits and filters. Ensure proper placement of patient circuits and filters to maintain the integrity of the ventilator system and protect against contamination. 4. Monitoring parameters. Continuously monitor vital signs, blood gases, and other relevant parameters to assess the patient's response to mechanical ventilation. Important note. Ventilator settings should be individualized based on the patient's diagnosis, respiratory mechanics, and response to therapy.